Hello, and welcome to our series, Catching Up with Sitecore JavaScript Services. JSS has been publicly available for six months, so in this Happy Your Birthday video of JSS 11 for Sitecore 9.0 and 9.1, I will celebrate JSS by recapping the key vision and achievements that made JSS so special and distinguishable from other implementation options. Then, keep an eye out for future videos in this series, where I will cover features from the upcoming release, which will be JSS 12 for Sitecore 9.2. Let's jump right in. In building our JavaScript layer, our goals were, first, to enable our customers to implement more modern, more dynamic apps, and second, to build a development toolkit that is so intuitive and flexible to customize, yet so powerful, that JavaScript developers will enjoy using it. Both of these points boil down to making it simple to integrate front-end JavaScript frameworks and all the tooling that's been built for those frameworks into Sitecore. If you haven't had the chance to work with front-end frameworks, you may be wondering what all the fuss is about. There are specific benefits that, that these frameworks bring to our solutions. First, front-end frameworks are attributed with better client-side performance. Instead of reloading the entire page for every new application state or user interaction, only the parts of the page that changed are updated. And since updating page elements is the primary use case, front-end framework developers have spent a lot of time perfecting optimizations, so we can just reap the benefits. Maintenance is easier because once best practices and design patterns are learned, they can be carried over project to project, company to company. Component-based design and the preference of composition over inheritance encourages creation of self-contained modular components. Regarding data management, all front-end frameworks have a clearly defined API for how to maintain data and state across your application. So you're not stuck with the burden of maintaining data on DOM elements. With stats like 200 million downloads of React in the past year and the fact that front-end frameworks are used by major companies like Facebook and Netflix, we know there is a huge community of developers who contribute modules, articles, tutorials, and other types of expertise to the ecosystem, which is great for onboarding and continued learning. Progressive web apps are web apps built in JavaScript that satisfy a specific list of criteria, which enables them to load on mobile devices just like native apps, even when offline. Progressive web apps can be downloaded through mobile app stores, so it's a different way to reach end users. JavaScript web apps are nimble, self-contained bundles, so they are easier to deploy and manage. They can be deployed headlessly to any platform that runs server-side JavaScript. And finally, building JavaScript apps enables us to use CDNs, proxies, and node servers to scale our applications. Now that we understand the business and developer value of front-end frameworks, let's look at why a development kit like JSS is needed to integrate them into Sitecore. Front-end frameworks are awesome, but they assume our workflow where developers control the page and component composition through code. This is in conflict with the Sitecore workflow, where content authors control page and component composition. In Sitecore, content authors assemble pages by selecting components and experience editor, so the Sitecore users, not the developers, are in control of layout. Additionally, once the content author has completed arranging and populating the components, he or she can add additional dynamic behavior that will execute at render time by applying personalization rules. For example, the author may add rules that swap out content based on the end user's persona or locale. The bottom line is that page composition is not known at development time. And this function of enabling authors to personalize the page and then dynamically resolving what the page should look like at render time, that is the magic that JSS brings to the JavaScript layer. The way this works is that when rendering for experience editor, the JavaScript must be rendered server side. This is because in order to make the components movable, editable, and personalizable in the author interface, the component HTML gets wrapped with extra HTML when it's sent to the editor. This server-side JavaScript rendering engine is one of the key elements of JSS. When the author is done building, data about component placement and field values, which is what we call layout data, gets saved on the server. On the other hand, when rendering for the end user, the JSS app can be rendered server-side or client-side, but it needs to hit the server to fetch layout data from the layout service so that the app knows which components to render. So how exactly does the JSS app consume the layout data coming from layout service? For this, JSS brings a series of NPM packages that bridge the gap between Sitecore data schema and front-end framework APIs. Helper components are provided for all Sitecore field types, 
and most importantly, for placeholders. This is the most basic example of a React component using the JSS placeholder component. The placeholder is given a name, in this case, JSS main. As far as the component knows, it just has a hole that can be filled with anything. When the app runs, JSS uses JSON layout data from the server to figure out what the author has placed into this placeholder, instantiate those components, and then render everything in the correct hierarchy. If we take a look at the underlying JSS code, we can open up one of the front end framework packages. So I'll look at the React one, for example. So this is probably what's most interesting to the majority of developers out there, the usage of these helper components. These helper components are analogous to MVC HTML helpers for rendering specific type of fields and doing things that require a site or context. The most important helper is the placeholder because this is the power of the layout engine. It's this ability to define a placeholder or hole in your page and inject contents into it and have them rendered dynamically. In this component, it takes the component factory as one of its properties. The component factory is a mapping between the names of React components and their analogous Sitecore renderings. So if we step into this get placeholder data from rendering data function right here. It gets all the data for that placeholder, maps over it, and instantiates the components inside of it. Here's a more complete diagram of the architecture of editor mode. The layout data, meaning information about how the author assembled the page, is sent from the browser to the back end when the author saves the page. This is saved in the database. When a page is requested, the layout service in the ASP.NET layer gets information for the current page from the database and figures out the dynamic layout based on the context, like current user and current site. It passes this data in JSON format to a node rendering service, which renders the app and returns HTML. And finally, the HTML is served to the browser. Of course, this scenario depends on the existence of a Sitecore instance to store and serve layout data. And one of the coolest achievements of JSS is the ability to work without a Sitecore instance when developing locally. The way this works is that data that would normally exist in Sitecore is housed in files on the file system during development. We call this manifest data, and it's used to define everything from templates to rendering definitions to page layout. For example, here's what a definition for a component would look like. So I'm defining the name, the display name, and then what it fields are and what their types are. It's simply a file in my project. And likewise, here's an example of what a page with all of its components and placeholders would look like. It's a, it's a YAML file inside of my project. Manifest generation is a feature of JSS where it finds all the components and data model definitions in your project based on naming conventions, transpiles them so that they can be written using ES6 syntax, dynamically imports and executes them, and generates a JSON representation of your site pages. When running in disconnected mode, we spin up a small express server to function as a mock layout service. It runs the manifest generation process and loads the manifest data into memory. When a request comes in, it extracts the route from the request and passes back the appropriate data from the manifest data, just as though it were coming from the Sitecore database. We use Webpack Dev Server to render the app in the browser, and any calls to layout service are proxy to the mock layout service. In this way, JSS enables you to test your app without having Sitecore running. And after moving from disconnected development to connected development, this JSON manifest is used as an import source. JavaScript developers push code to source control, then the manifest is generated on the integration environment, and the integration environment runs the import tasks. So the import service is the final key component of JSS. The final mode to discuss is the headless proxy mode for production. It's not required to server-side render your JSS app in production, but this is certainly the best approach for scaling and SEO concerns. In this model, page requests from the browser are proxied to layout service through Node. 
we're able to preserve cookies and rewrite origins in a safe and secure way by using an HTTP proxy middleware module. This enables us to achieve a truly headless architecture while preserving all of Sitecore's personalization and analytics capabilities. So in this video, we looked at the benefits of developing apps with front-end frameworks, and we looked at the different services that come with JSS that enable us to utilize those front-end frameworks. In the next video, we'll take a closer look at what JSS does to improve developer experience. Thanks for watching.